Hi everyone. Um, what day is it, Jenny? It is Wednesday. Yes. Happy Wednesday. And we were both saying that we need to see a hairdresser. Yeah, we're kind of getting locked down haircuts here, so um, hairstyles. So we need some help. <laughs> help. <laughs> um, but that's, that's not a great problem, is it? No. Uh, Psalm 27 we're on this week. Thanks uh, to you all for posting your comments. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was really nice to uh, listen to the music yesterday that some of you recommended. Um, so thanks a lot. And to read Mike Smith's testimony, how somebody in a bookstore just gave him a book and that was kind of the first seed toward finding Jesus. So um, mm. thanks for that. That's really encouraging. Yeah, we've been talking this week about the beauty of ad ad adoration, the spiritual discipline of adoration and uh, the, ad ad beholding the beauty of the Lord, this one thing that David is seeking the face of God, really, uh, when he's surrounded by enemies and then camp and an army and camp around me, though my mother and father forsake me, exis existential threats, really. But in the midst of it all, he's saying, you know, you lift me up above my enemies. You, you preserve me, you help me, you protect me. And I think through all of these Psalms that we've been reading, we just find this theme again and again and again, don't we, of of David just kind of praying out his emotions before God. And I think that's what's so powerful about the Psalms, this prayer book of the Hebrews, that um, it's just so full of honest emotion. We talked about the difference between stuffing down your emotions or over emoting, but actually what we're doing here is emoting in the presence of God and just being honest before God. And I do love the honesty of the Psalms that they, that they do that, you know, David is struggling and uh, and yet he's still he knows he's got to fix his eyes on god and and we we know we've got to fix our eyes on jesus the author and finisher of our faith so we'll read the psalm together um and then we'll share a couple of thoughts with you for today uh, do you want to start us off jenny okay yeah. the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall i be afraid when evil men advance against me to defile my flesh or to slander me, uh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, Seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. just wanted to have a little think about some of these verses here. Um, verse um, verse uh, 9 uh, or verse 8 onwards, really. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O oh God, my Saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. I spoke on Sunday about um, John 6, uh, 35, that those that come to him, those that the Father gives to, to Jesus, that he in no wise or in no way will cast out. We talked about the fact that God never rejects us ever and um, that we all experience, don't we, at some stage of our lives, we all experience some form of rejection or some form of abandonment or some form of disappointment in that sense where people turn their faces away from us. 
But David's saying, God, don't reject me. And even if my mom and dad forsake me, which is highly unlikely for most of us, but even if, even if that happens, even if the most fundamental of relationships in my life break down, you, God, you will not, you will receive me. And David is coming and he's coming surrounded by enemies. He's coming with people who are on his case. But he's saying, God, you know, I know that you won't, you won't turn me away. You won't turn your face from me and uh, you will receive me. And um, I, I want to remind us this morning uh, that, that God will in no way, not, not ever reject us or turn us away when we come to him. And in fact, he will do what we speak out when we speak the blessing, that he will turn his face towards us. <laughs> And uh, he, he will cause his face to shine on us. That's what the blessing of God is, really, that, that God looks to us in a, in a loving and compassionate way. And he turns his face towards us. He never turns his face away from us, uh, but he turns towards us and he receives us. And David has found God again and again and again to be his safe place. When his, um, his best friend's dad and his king Saul rejected him in a very, very strong and forceful way, throwing spears at him and trying to kill him. When his own son turned on him, Absalom, and, and raised up an army to usurp his father's natural and author authority. Um, when his own kids turned on him or he experienced other situations, he knew that God would never, never turn on him, never reject him. And so we can come, as we've been thinking these Sundays, we can come with boldness to the throne of grace and we will receive mercy and grace in our time of need. And uh, I just want to remind us this morning of that ability to come to the Lord and that he is a lifter of your head and he will receive you with arms wide open. I took comfort from the fact, um, I, if you look at this, this whole song, it seems almost to have two parts doesn't it the first seven verses are fairly positive aren't they i you know all i need is god and god will protect me and god will do this and then the second part that we're kind of looking at today it's more like saying don't reject me don't forsake me so um i read in a commentary that it's widely believed that these were actually two songs that have kind of been stapled together um but it doesn't really matter does it i think what's what's good about it for us today in the in the 21st century is just to take comfort from the fact that even David had his ups and, and downs with his faith. Um, he had experienced, you know, amazing things with God. He killed Goliath and um, was made king against all odds and, you know, survived um, being chased around and, and wasn't, you know, anyway, he had an amazing experiences with God. And yet he still even even he has to say sometimes, God, don't forsake me, you know, God help me. Um, so just maybe we could take comfort from that, that if, if we're having a bit of a down day that, you know, David did too, and yet God's word is still true and, and, and still, you know, right, that, that he says, I will not forsake you, even if your mother and father forsake you, even then, even if you lose your basic identity, even if, you know, you have no anchor in that sense, I am your anchor and I will not forsake you. So yeah, that's that's what struck me on, on the mm. second part of the song. Yeah, it's really powerful. And mm. yeah, I, 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 I love what yeah Eugene Peterson writes about being an uneven performer. He, he speaks of the sawtooth history of Israel, the up and down nature of their faith and their walk with God. And I think that applies to every one of us. You know, we all are a little bit up and down. We are all inconsistent performers. And, um, and yet God, God is not. <laughs> God is faithful from generation to generation to generation. God is everlasting. He's underneath us are his everlasting arms. Mm -hmm. And when we are faithless, he is faithful. And uh, you can come to him this morning and pour out your heart to him mm -hmm. in worship, in adoration, in petition, in uh, crying out to God. And, um, and so that's um, what we're going to do uh, this morning. We'll pray together as we close out this um this, this um, thought for the day um, and commit, commit ourselves to God. Maybe Jenny will pray mm -hmm. for us. Father, we thank you that you never reject us, you never forsake us, that you are true when we are not true, you are consistent and constant when we are inconsistent. 
we thank you for that. And I just pray that today everyone listening and watching would really feel and experience the everlasting arms of Jesus around them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless amen. you. May you uh, sense God's presence with you today by his Holy Spirit. Have a great day.